Nuts on keto. What are some of the best nuts for a ketogenic diet and what are some of the worst ones that you want to avoid? Today we're going to cover 15 of the most popular nuts in the world and of course we're going to talk about some important aspects that you don't usually hear about. Coming right up. Hey, I'm Dr. Ekberg. I'm a holistic doctor and a former Olympic decathlete. And if you like to truly master health by understanding how the body really works, make sure you subscribe and hit that notification bell so that you don't miss anything. On a ketogenic diet, of course, you are looking to reduce carbs and nuts are generally pretty low in carbs, but there are some exceptions. I'm going to recommend these nuts based on how many net carbs they have, how much fat they have, what's their level of omega-6s, and what is the omega-6 to omega-3 ratio. And we'll talk about what that is and why it matters. Number 15 on the list is betel nuts. And even though a lot of people probably haven't heard of them, they're very common. They are number seven on the most produced nuts in the world, over a million tons. And they're chewed as a psychoactive drug in many cultures. So. The reason I have them at the bottom of the list is because we're talking about keto and they have 61% net carbs. So all of these numbers are in grams per hundred. So it's percent net carbs. They only have 9% fat and they also have, I could not find any of the numbers for omega sixes. So Besides not being a huge fan of psychoactive drugs, it is basically as starchy as bread. So we definitely want to avoid that one. Number 14 on the list is chestnuts. And I don't think I've ever had a chestnut. I only know of them in Christmas songs, but they are the sixth most produced nut in the world. I don't think it's a great idea because it has 48% net carbs and it's extremely low in fat. So again, in keto, we're looking for low carbs and high fat. Number 13, cola nuts. Used to be an ingredient in Coca-Cola. It is on the top 10 list of the most produced nuts, but I don't think I've ever had one. And it has 21% net carbs and very, very low in fat. So uh, I included these on the list because they are on the top 10 most produced nuts in the world. But again, for a ketogenic diet, we, I don't recommend them. So let's just leave those for now. And I'd also like to make a short disclaimer because I know that I'll get about 50 comments or so explaining that some of these mentions are not actually nuts, that some are droops or legumes and so forth. So yes, I'm well, very well aware of that. Uh, as a matter of fact, out of these 50 nuts, there will only be three true nuts, which in a botanical sense means that they're dry, hard-shelled, uncompartmented fruit that do not split on maturity to release seeds. And I won't bore you with all these definitions, but actually eight out of these 15 will be droops. Many of them you think of as nuts. And one will be a gymnosperm, a nut-like gymnosperm seed. And three of them will be nut-like angiosperm seeds. So that's the botanical disclaimer. We're just going to talk about them as nuts because that's how people refer to them in general language. Number 12 on the list is a disappointment for a lot of people. It is a favorite for many. It's cashew nuts. I mean, how can you not like cashews? But they are very high. They're almost 30%, 29% net carbohydrate. They do have a good amount of fat, 44% fat, and they have eight grams of omega-6s. And I'll come back and talk more about those. But the cashews, we can't really recommend because it is quite high in carbohydrate. Almost a third of it is, is starch. Number 11, pistachios. 17% carbs, again, quite high for a ketogenic diet. And again, a big disappointment because two of my absolute favorite nuts, I mean, they're so sweet and so nice in your mouth are cashews and pistachios. But 
have very, very few if you're trying to stay in ketosis. Number 10, hickory nuts. I don't know that I've ever had one of those, but they are quite common. And it has 12 grams, 12% 12 carbohydrate, 64% fat, and 20% omega-6s. It's omega-6 to 3 ratio is 20, and again, I'll come back to that. Now we're starting to get up into what we think of as nuts with a low carbohydrate and a high fat ratio. Number nine, pine nuts, nine grams of net carbs, 68% fat. Number eight, almonds have 9% net carbs, 50% fat. So again, not as good as some of the best ones. A lot of people have been asking me about almonds. A lot of people love almonds and it's pretty good, not one of the absolute best. Number seven, hazelnuts, also known as filberts in some countries, 7% net carbs and 61% fat. Number six, Brazil nuts, 5% net carbs and 66% fat. Number five, peanuts, which of course a lot of people refer to as a legume, but it has the name nut in its name and we eat it in such a way, has six grams of net carbs and 50% fat. Number four, one of my absolute favorites is coconut and we're, these numbers are for dried coconut. So the one you buy that's dried and shredded usually because the fresh coconut meat has a lot of moisture in it. So by the time you dry it, then we get these numbers. 7 grams of net carbs and 65% fat. Number three, pecans, has only 4 grams of net carbs and 72% fat. That's why it's so yummy. It's very, very high fat and it's so delicious. Number two, walnuts, 3 grams of net carbs, 59 grams of fat. And my number one favorite nut for a ketogenic diet is the macadamia nut. Six grams of net carbs and 76 grams of fat. So let's talk about the important stuff. Why does the list look like this? Why have I chosen these particular properties to recommend the nuts? Because as you can see, net carbs is hugely important, but it's not in direct order of lowest to highest. We do want low net carbs and we do want high fat, but we also are concerned with the quality of the fat, the type of fat, because we have a huge problem in this country. One of the main benefits of the ketogenic diet is that it reduces inflammation, an inflammation that is caused by sugar and grains. But part of that inflammation is also caused by excess omega-6 fatty acids. So even though omega-6s and omega-3s are both essential, when we get them out of proportion, then it becomes very inflammatory and very damaging. And that's one of the biggest problems that we have in our diet today. When we look at an omega-6 to an omega-3 ratio, we want it to be as close as possible to one to one an equal amount of omega-6s to an equal amount of omega-3s. Now, it's still okay. They have estimated that our ancestors and the paleo diets and so forth, that you can still have optimum health up to about a four to one. So we wanna keep the omega-6s no more than four times higher than the omega-3s. And it doesn't mean that we need to avoid omega-6s completely. It just means that we need to be aware of them and we need to counteract them with some omega-3s because basically omega-6s participate in pro-inflammatory pathways and omega-3s participate in anti-inflammatory pathways. That's one of the reasons fish oil is so beneficial. It has anti-inflammatory properties and it counteracts the inflammatory effects of the modern diet. So when we look at these numbers, the reason macadamia is my absolute favorite, even though it doesn't have the lowest carbs, is that it does have a very high fat content, but out of that 76 grams of fat, only 1.3 grams is an omega-6. So even if you ate a whole 100 grams of 
macadamia nuts, which is quite a bit, that's like 800 calories almost, you would only get about one gram of omega-6s. So it's very, very easy to compensate, to counteract that. And if we look at the omega-6 to 3 ratio, this doesn't mean all that much. We, we can look at it and say, okay, 6 to 1 is pretty close to 4 to 1. So we're not, we're staying pretty neutral to that ratio eating macadamia nuts. But the other way of looking at it is we're only getting a tiny bit of omega-6s and therefore it's very easy to eat some fish or some fish oil and make up for that. So walnuts is number two on the list because it's very low in carbs. It is quite high in fat, not as high. And even though it has a higher omega-6, it is the nut with the best omega-6 to 3 ratio because it's the only nut that really has any substantial amount of omega-3s. Walnuts have about a 9% omega-3 content and most of the nuts have zero point something. So you could eat a, a lot of walnuts. You can eat a large amount of walnuts and stay with that four to one ratio and not really violate that ratio too much. Pecans number three has very low net carbs, four grams, very high fat, but it does have a large amount of omega-6s and it doesn't have any omega-3s to offset it. So the modern diet has about 20 times more omega-6 than omega-1. And that's one of the big problems that we have. Like I mentioned that the omega-6s from grain-fed beef and from seed oils, often called vegetable oils like soybean and canola and sunflower and safflower, they're extremely high in omega-6s. And those are all the oils that they use for commercial cooking. So anytime that you go out to a restaurant and eat food, just cooked food, but especially fried food, you're getting very, very high omega-6 ratios. And like I said, that ratio is often as high as a 20 to 1 and if we eat a lot of pecans we're kind of ending up around that 20 to 1 ratio. Again it doesn't mean we can't eat pecans but we need to be a little bit aware of how much omega-6s are we adding up so that we can compensate for them with omega-3s. Number four coconut. 7 grams of net carbs, it's a little bit higher, fat is 65, but here's the beauty of the coconut, that there is no way that you can eat enough coconut to get a large amount of omega-6s. It is mostly saturated fats, which are very healthy, very stable. The, lar the majority of the fat in coconut are medium chain triglycerides, MCT oil is made from coconut. And therefore, there's a very low, very small amount of omega-6s. And that's why it's such a good anti-inflammatory food. I love to use it in cookies, in baking. You can make the coconut macaroons. I use it in smoothies. One of my absolute favorites. Number five, peanuts. Six grams of net carbs, 50 grams of fat. Uh, 16 grams of omega-6s, so it's pretty high there. And when you look at the ratio of 6 to 3, you see that it's way, way, way over that 20 that we're trying to avoid. It's 5,185. And all that means is that it has no omega-3s to speak of. So we just have to count up. We have to be aware that for 100 grams of peanuts, then we're getting 16 grams of omega-6s. So again, not really worse than walnuts or pecans. Number six, Brazil nuts. 5 grams of net carbs, 66 grams of fat, and 21 grams of omega-6s. So again, a little bit higher than we want. Number seven, hazelnuts, filberts. 7 grams of net carbs, 61% fat, 33 grams of omega-6s, and not quite so bad omega-6 to 3 ratio, but again, for every 100 grams we eat, we get a lot of omega-6s. So better not eat too much. Almonds is a favorite with a lot of people, 9 grams of carbs, 50% fat, but only 12 grams of omega-6s. 
So it is one of the better ones. Pine nuts, nine grams of carbs, 68% fat, 33% omega-6s. So when we look at it from this standpoint, then we see that, yes, we want to avoid carbs, we want to have a lot of good fats, but when too much of those fats are omega-6s, again, we need some omega-6s, but we really got to watch the quantity so we don't disrupt that ratio too much. When we eat grass-fed butter and grass-fed milk, then we're staying close to that one-to-one -one ratio. It's a stable, it's a neutral food. And we just, when we eat fish, of course, we're getting tons and tons of omega-3s. So fish and fish oil is really about the only thing that can offset that omega-6 dominance. We eat as much neutral one-to-one -one food as we can, and then we want to eat some fish, some fish oil to offset the fact that a lot of other food has a lot of omega-6s. So a lot of times I see people talk about numbers of macronutrients and they're talking about cups or half a cup or, or a serving, but the, a cup means different things because a cup weighs different amounts. So you're not comparing apples to apples when you're talking about a cup or when you're talking about a serving. That's why I give you all the numbers in terms of 100 grams. That way, all the numbers are percentages. Another prominent channel was talking about nuts, and they were comparing almond butter to peanut butter. And they said that almond butter was much, much better than peanut butter because almond butter had less carbs. Well, that's not correct because if you do a quality nut butter, then there is nothing in there except the nut. You grind up the peanuts and you have peanut butter. You grind up the almond and you have almond butter. There is nothing added. You could flavor it with some salt, but a quality product, a natural product, is not going to have anything in it. So therefore, the nut butter has exactly the same numbers as the nut would. And when we compare almonds at 9 grams and peanuts at 6 grams, peanut butter actually comes out ahead in terms of carbohydrate content. The reason a lot of peanut butter is high in carbs is because they add sugar and they add hydrogenated fats to make, the, make it not separate. So everything we're talking about here, of course, means that you get a good quality product. So we're going to elaborate one step further on who's the winner here. So in the margin here, I have three X's. These are the ones that are that you really want to avoid because they're very, very starchy. They're very low fat. There's nothing there that's congruent with a ketogenic diet. Then I have a couple of question marks on cashews and pistachios because they are super yummy, but they are high in carbs. So again, if you're on a ketogenic diet and you're allowing yourself 30 grams of carbs, you could still have a few nuts. You just can't have handfuls of them, right? You just got to figure out where that fits in your budget. Next, we have four orange check marks. And these are for hickory nuts, pine nuts, almonds, and hazelnuts. So these are basically really good keto foods if you eat just a little bit. So you could have a handful, but you can't just go to town on it because then these carbs are going to add up. Then I have a couple of check marks with a question mark. And why is that? Because Brazil nuts and peanuts, even though the numbers look really, really good and a lot of people love them, what I have found in my clinic is that these are the two most common allergens. Those are the, the most commonly nuts that the people are intolerant to. So a lot of people don't realize it with Brazil nuts. A lot of people know it with peanuts. They know that allergies can be anaphylactic. They can be very serious. But when you get down to the really, really fine nuances of how well the body tolerates something, Brazil nuts show up as one of the most common intolerances. So be very careful with that. The top four check marks, those are my superstars. These are nuts that you can eat a large amount 
Uh, pecans is the only one that I would be a little bit more careful with. And of course, macadamias, because of the omega-6s, the high fat, the low carbs, you could eat virtually unlimited macadamias, you could eat virtually unlimited coconuts. And again, they're so rich that you're not gonna eat a half a pound of, of those nuts. But even if you did, you'd still be within your ketogenic limits. If you liked this video and you'd like to learn more about the ketogenic lifestyle, I bet you'd love that video. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in the next video.